Hola y bienvenidos a Norton Spanish Basics. Hey, I've had some questions lately. I'm going to just start this off on a personal note. Uh, I've had some questions lately about who I am, what my background is. Uh, I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself here real quick. Um, I am a Spanish teacher. I work a little bit with technology, of course, and, and that's kind of what got me interested in podcasts. I taught younger kids, but I got my, my professional start with Spanish uh, teaching the community college level out in San Diego, and now I'm a uh, high school Spanish teacher and educational technology trainer. Uh, my undergraduate and graduate studies were both in Spanish. Uh, I lived in Argentina for quite a while, and uh, did some of my graduate work at the University of Costa Rica, and, uh, and got a few kids, spouse, you know, good life. My favorite classes to teach are at the high school level. I do really enjoy teaching high school. Um, I've taught you know, several levels in high school. Uh, I've taught Spanish for Spanish speakers, where we focus on literature and some of the grammar structures. But I think my favorite class to teach is second year Spanish, and that's why these podcasts are sort of geared towards the second year of high school Spanish student or the second semester of college uh, Spanish student, which I also taught, by the way. Um, one part of Spanish that I see a lot of those second semester or second year people struggling with is one of the first things we learn in Spanish. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about me gusta, te gusta, le gusta, that whole I like, you like, he likes uh, structure. Um, here are some examples. Me gusta escuchar música. Me gusta comer frutas. También me gustan las hamburguesas. No me gusta nada las remolachas, beets. No me gusta nada las remolachas. How'd you do with those? Did you understand them? Let's go over some of the stuff with me gusta and forms of gustar. And hopefully by the end of the lesson you'll be a little bit more confident with it. To say that you like something is done differently in Spanish than in English. It's actually a whole mind shift. That's why so many people have a hard time figuring out the, the conjugations here. Talking about our likes and dislikes requires a slightly different perspective than what, you might, than what you might be used to if you're a native English speaker. As you learn in Spanish 1, we typically use the verb gustar, gustar to discuss our likes and dislikes. Many people will say that gustar means to like, as in, I like apples. Uh, and that's, a, that's kind of a misconception that people get when, when your first year or first semester teacher says gustar means to like. That's not really accurate. More accurate would be to say that gustar actually means to be pleasing. So in Spanish, we don't really say, I like apples. Instead, what we really want to say, or, or what really literally comes out is, apples are pleasing to me. That's why we say that it requires slightly different perspective. In English, we are accustomed to declare what we like. Not to think, say, or even believe that it is not us that is doing the action. Rather, that noun, the thing that is liked or disliked, is actually the noun performing the action. Okay, so it's not so self-centered of, I like this, I don't like that. It's actually, that apple is pleasing to me. That apple has the ability to please. The apple is what's doing the pleasing. Clear as mud? Okay, don't worry. By the end of this lesson, you should be, uh, you should be completely comfortable with how this, uh, how this works. In order to say this, though, we need to learn a few words called indirect object pronouns. You probably discussed indirect object pronouns briefly in Spanish 1. Um, a lot of people don't even know what they are in English, so let's not worry too much about what they're called grammatically. I, I kind of like grammar, so sometimes I talk about the grammar stuff. I know a lot of teachers are a lot more um, into the communication. Grammar doesn't matter, but I, I, I enjoy the grammar. I, under, I enjoy understanding how things work. Okay, so let's talk about indirect object pronouns. We'll do a whole other podcast on these. But just briefly here, real, real quick overview. As the name insinuates, an indirect object receives the action of the verb indirectly. So if a verb does an action, it's what's receiving that action indirectly. What this means is that the indirect object in the sentence indicates the to or for whom the action is completed. In the sentence, Matt gives the book to John. Matt gives the book to John. Matt is the subject. He is the one performing the action of the verb, to give. The book is the direct object. It is directly receiving the action of the verb. Okay. John, though, 
is the indirect object because he indirectly receives the action of the verb. The book is given, but given to John. So we have, <laughs> if, if, if I don't have you confused too much yet, Matt gives the book, so there's our main thing, but John is sort of this third party thing. It's being given to John. He's indirectly receiving the giving. John is a noun, so in this sentence, uh, John is the indirect object, noun. When we replace to John with to him, the indirect object noun becomes an indirect object pronoun. Remember, a pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. So instead of saying gives the book to John, indirect object noun, now we say gives the book to him, indirect object pronoun. If you need this a little slower, you need to read it to kind of um, process it, you can, you're welcome to hit the show notes and uh, I'll have a, basically this this uh, this part of it written out there for you. Okay, you'll notice that in English we use two words to identify the indirect object. In the example, those two words were to him. In Spanish, both words are wrapped up into one little indirect object pronoun. Le. L-E. Le. So here's a list of some of the indirect object pronouns in Spanish. To or for me, me. To or for you, informal, talking to a friend. To or for you, Te. To or for him, her, or usted, the U-formal, le. To or for us, nos. To or for y'all, the informal, it's used in Spain, I don't deal with it too much in these podcasts. To or for y'all, os, O-S. To or for them, or y'all, the plural third person, les. Me, te, le, nos, os, les. So you may be wondering what all this has to do with gustar. It's because we're going to use these to to say to whom the apples are pleasing, to whom the beets are not pleasing, etc. Okay. Now, where we put these indirect object pronouns does matter. These indirect object pronouns, me, te, le, nos, os, les, usually go before a conjugated verb or connected to an infinitive verb. Okay, there are some, some other instances like command form where this doesn't apply, but generally speaking, they be, go before a conjugated verb or connected to an infinitive. So let's look at a few examples here. In English, you would say, I like apples. But the structure we would use in Spanish is, to me are pleasing the apples. Me is the to me. Gustan, they please. Las manzanas. Me gustan las manzanas. Now this is where I see the most students trip up here. They see the verb gustar and they, they'll want to think gusto because it's I like. No, no, no. Remember, gustar means to be pleasing is a more accurate description. So what is doing the pleasing? Well, it's not gusto because gusto would be I am pleasing. No, we want to say the apples are pleasing to me. So if the apples are pleasing, then gustar gets conjugated as gustan. Las manzanas gustan. The apples please. Well, to whom? To me. Me gustan las manzanas. Okay, here's another example. You like to eat. The structure then would be to you is pleasing to eat. Te gusta comer. Te gusta comer. To eat, comer is pleasing, gusta, to you, te, te gusta comer. We like the book. Okay, in English, we like the book. But in Spanish, remember, the book is what's doing the pleasing. So the book is pleasing to us, or to us is pleasing the book. Nos is the to us, el libro is the subject, and so it would conjugate it, gusta. Nos gusta el libro, nos gusta el libro. Nos gusta el libro. Te gusta comer. Me gustan las manzanas. Okay, I go back over those others so we can kind of refresh what's going on here. Me gustan las manzanas. Te gusta comer. Nos gusta el libro. He likes your car. So to him is pleasing your car. Le gusta. To him it pleases tu coche. Le gusta tu coche. Le gusta tu coche. Now, 
I'm not really sure here if the lay is to him, to her, or to usted. So you can always clarify with a él le gusta tu coche. A ella le gusta tu coche. So yeah, whenever you have the lay, uh, you can add the a él, a Mario, a Miguel. You know, you can add that a, then the person to clarify. A ella le gusta tu coche. A él le gusta tu coche. And that will clarify what the lay is. Now you can also use that ah uh, to emphasize. Um, we'll talk about that more in just a second here. Okay, so there are three things I want you to observe in the in the examples that I just gave. Number one, the indirect object pronoun. I call it the IOP sometimes just for short. So the indirect object pronoun in these examples is always before the conjugated ver form of the Spanish verb gustar. Okay, number two, when it is only one thing that is pleasing, we conjugate the verb as gusta. But when there is more than one item that is pleasing, we conjugate the verb as gustan. Because again, singular gusta, simple conjugation, plural gustan. Okay. Now if you're not sure what the difference is between gusta and gustan, I recommend that you check out a podcast or do some search on basic present tense conjugations in Spanish. The difference between gusta and gustan. It's like el habla ellos hablan. Uh, same thing there, a or an. Okay, some Spanish teachers have a rough time helping students to understand why this happens. Uh, you know, they simply say, hey, if it's singular, gusta, if it's plural, gustan. And just take that and just go with this. Okay, I, I, I remember that clearly from when I first started learning Spanish in junior high. Okay. Um, now, since we clarified that gustar means to be pleasing, it should be easier to understand now why we conjugate gustar the way we do. Okay, observe. The apples are pleasing. Gustan las manzanas. The apple is pleasing. Gusta la manzana. Of course, the sentence gusta la manzana doesn't make much sense because if the apple is pleasing, it has to be pleasing to somebody. So we complete the sentence with the IOP me. Me gusta la manzana. Okay, the third thing I want you to observe from those examples a moment ago. Uh, in the sentence, he likes your car, and the sentence, she likes your car, they look the very same in Spanish. I mentioned this a second ago. Le gusta tu coche. That's because the indirect object pronoun for to him is le. And the indirect object pronoun for to her is also le. So we may want to clarify, like I said, with the a el or a ella. We can also do that to uh, to add emphasis. I told you we'd talk about this in a second. Now here we are. You can also use that a ah to add emphasis. For example, if somebody says to me, No me gustan las manzanas. I could simply say, Me gustan las manzanas. But I might want to just add some emphasis. A mí me gustan las manzanas, pero a ella no le gustan las manzanas. Adding some emphasis there. It's sort of like in English when we say, Well, I like apples. It sounds a little different than, I don't like apples. Well, I like apples. You know, there's a different intonation there, and that's kind of what we're doing when we're adding that, A mí. A mí me gustan las manzanas. A ti te gusta comer. A nosotros nos gusta el libro. A mí me gusta tu coche. A él le gusta tu coche. A ella Le, tu, le gusta tu coche. Okay, and there are other words that we'll be studying later on uh, throughout the year or throughout your study of Spanish that operate the same way. One of those is encantar, which means, some books will say it means to really like, but what it really means is to be enchanting, or as we would say in English, really like or love. Me encanta el español. Me encanta. It is enchanting to me. It is very super pleasing to me. El español. It's a little beyond gustar. Okay, we'll do with more with encantar later. But I just want to let you know that it it follows that same route. So I want to plant that seed in your head right now. Okay. Um, I'll tell you a little bit, a bit more about me here as we wind up. Okay. Um, me gusta la tecnología. Uh, me gusta leer. No tengo mucho tiempo para leer, pero me gusta leer un poco. Uh, me gusta qué más uh, me gusta correr me gusta correr un poco me gusta viajar uh, no me gustan las remolachas 
but now I want you to answer some questions about yourself. I'm going to ask you a few questions, and you try to come up with some answers, okay? Here we go. Let me ask you a few questions. ¿Te gusta correr? ¿Te gusta correr? ¿Te gusta estudiar? ¿Te gusta leer libros? ¿Te gusta dibujar? ¿Qué te gusta comer? ¿Qué te gusta comer? ¿Te gusta ir al cine? ¿Te gusta ir al cine? Ok, chicos, gracias por escuchar este podcast. If you do subscribe to this podcast, I'd appreciate it if you could just leave me a rating in iTunes. Y bueno, espero que you guys have a great day. Y adiós.